Well, like I've been telling you, this here's a doorbell transformer. This here's a live wire. Let's see if we can't get these things to work. Let's throw some switches. <laughs> Bad idea. All right, well, as I just showed you previously, we're going to learn how to hook these up. This here, the 120 volt, 68 hertz AC current rectifier, which produces 16 volts at 30 volt amps of alternating current. This, believe it or not, is the end of a plug that you can get for any computer. It's a 110 plug. Now the white wire goes to the white wire on that. The yellow wire goes to the green wire on that. That's actually the ground. And then this blue wire goes to the black wire on there. It's actually the cold or inert or neutral wire, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had to do a quick test with a multimeter to figure that out. So I'm going to grab some quick crimps and we're just going to get this done. It's going to take like two seconds. Once it's uh, crimped together, it's good. I'll be back. Okay, one last thing for set health and safety, as they call it over in the UK. I just call it OSHA. Because <laughs> that's what we do in the United States. All right. The bell transformer is running down the wire all the way on down over to a 15 amp power strip. Now I suggest to anybody doing any sort of modeling, electronics and stuff like that, get either a 15 amp inline circuit breaker or one of these power strips. The reason why is because if there is a short here, it's going to kick that off instead of that off and we all know how hard it is to work in the dark let's see if i got it right or if it kicks the breaker must be right all right now i got my multimeter set for ac and we're gonna see if we got any power once i can line these up with a uh, one hand we got 17.6 volts of alternating current. 17.7, 17.0. That's still more than enough to kick over all sorts of under table switch machines. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna remount that one. And then we gotta cut a hole in order to make some progress. So I will be right back. Well, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. This is the back of my control panel. Now, when I'm uh, looping a common, I loop it around both, just so that all the power's there and I can solder all that together. There's one side and there's the other side. I'm using red and green for regular and diverging. That's how I wire my switch motors. Now, the red can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to remember, but this is how I do it. I've got a power strip already set up. All centers just come right back to ground, so I just wire that up independent. So here we go. In a few minutes, I'll be on that. Oh, all my AC wires are white, by the way. So everything that's gonna be coming out of there is gonna be white. Have a good one. Oh, I ain't done yet, but this is still taking a while. Well, I was trying to get this finished. I got the control panel up. This is the switch that I'm working on. This is what controls the power plant, which is back there. I don't know how well you can see it, but you can't see the screen right now. But it's 10 o'clock at night. I've been out here since eight o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. I did not prep well enough, I think. So, I'm gonna finish this video tomorrow. I'm gonna upload what I got already and I'm gonna rehash it, re edit it all together and put out with an update. So, yeah, have a good one. All right, I'm back in a, I'm back in a tight spot, so 
kind of prop this camera up. Now, a lot of us have to deal with wire like this, trying to get it around a screw terminal. Because a lot of us are cheap and they don't want to buy the uh, little spade connectors. Well, show you a little trick. Take your wire, roll it around the tip of your screwdriver. Gives you a really good hook. Now, whenever applying it, you want to make sure that that hook will close when you're screwing in. So always make it look like a backwards hook, um, backwards cue or whatever. Um, unfortunately, the tight spot that I'm working in does not allow me to show you me hooking this up. But like I said, I'm gonna use white for the neutral wires. One's going to the control panel, which I'm behind right now. And one is going to the control uh, block on the switches. Now, one thing I would like to say, it's because of me working in a tight spot with small things, uh, it is kind of a lousy work environment. Hold on a second, let me get this in there. Okay, so start your screw before you even try to put your wire on because if you uh, drop the screw, it's gonna take a while to work. And yeah, the wind's blowing tonight, so the lighting is going to suck because it shakes pretty bad. Man, that is tighter than my wife after a 12 day mender. Come on, wire. Come on there, hook on. They hooked while I wrap you around. This is why I'm not an electrician. I am impatient with these things. I want to break something. Hey, when I bend you up, I want you to stay in the shape that I bend you. I also want you to do what the heck I'm telling you to do. slot I'm going to pop down like a mouse yay now I take the screw and I got the hook on there backwards this is fun all right Some wiring brings a brand new term to fishing in the dark. And there we go, we got our return wire on. I already have one way already on there. And I'm gonna use brown and orange just for you know, simplicity, because I didn't feel like cutting more wire. Most of my wire is recycled old phone wire. So, if anybody has any complaints about that, I'm sorry, I'm doing this cheap. 
I will buy new wire if everything works right and when it burns out because there's no point in buying wire before it burns out. So I am going to get back to stripping, hooking, and doing what I need to do. And as you can see, I do have my good wire strippers out. So y'all have a good one. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I have not tried anything. Power still off. This is going to be a long video. The only ones that I've got wired up is Williamsport. There's no power yet. Uh, turn out for Williamsport power plant is back there. I still need to cut that nub down. But I've got the common wire and a positive wire connected to there, which comes up to a power terminal. That white wire goes to the buttons. And then the red and green wire go off to the orange and brown wire. Now, turn the power on. This might short out because I might have something on the track. But that tells me the power's on. That tells me power's on. All right. I have to put some clamps on this for the night to get that glue to stick good. All right. Well. Okay. I can hear it tripping. Can't really see. There, I can see. Okay. We've got one problem. It's backwards. So what I do is I'll swap the green for the orange, or the brown for the orange, swap those out to the green and the red, and I'll be right back. I'm back, I swapped the two, swapped the two wires. The red's now going to brown and the green is now going to orange. Now let's see here. Oop, I gotta turn on the layout again. Now it's working right. Now I can just trim that stick that sticks up a little shorter and we got loads and empty tracks ready to go because this would be the load track to the inside. Now I got it back. Okay, oh, I had it right the first time. But that's just literally how easy it is to fix all that. So, after me bumping my head several times, getting electrocuted like three times, uh, I'd like to send a special thanks out to the Ernest P. Whirl Studies of Electrical Engineering. They did give me my degree. So, I now have an electrical degree in electrical engineering from the Ernest P. Whirl Institute of electronic engineer y'all have a wonderful day